morning, dear colleagues. Please take your seats. I call this meeting, fourth and last meeting of the General Committee on Political Affairs and Security to order. I welcome all delegates and ask them to switch off their mobile phones. The draft agenda, dear colleagues, has been circulated. There are no objections. I consider the agenda adopted by the committee. As this is the final meeting, we'll hold elections for committee officials after we have dealt with the supplementary items. The deadline for nomination of committee officials was, was 9 o'clock today and has now passed. One nomination has been received for the post of chair. That's Meine Wenigkeit, Filippo Lombardi from Switzerland. One nomination has been received for the post of vice chair, Mrs. Sofia Cazzarava from Georgia. One nomination has been received for the post of rapporteur, Mr. Alan Farrell, Ireland. I will return to the election at the close of this meeting. Schedule and timing. Since this is the last meeting, I hope to conclude the consideration of supplementary items on time, and I think it's quite possible. We have worked well in the previous meetings, and I think we will do it also this morning. Thank you very much for your cooperation. We now come to supplementary item number three, strengthening OSCE's approach to supporting security sector governance and reform in participating states. There are three amendments to this item. I first give the floor to Mrs. Margaret Kinner Nellen from Switzerland, the sponsor of this draft resolution. Mrs. Kinner Nellen, you have the floor. Signor Presidente, cari colleghi, cari colleghe. D'abord, j'aimerais remercier toutes celles et ceux qui ont bien voulu signer cette résolution et ainsi aider à la porter à l'ordre du jour. Au cours des dernières années, les conflits sont devenus plus complexes et perdurent souvent dans le temps sans solution politique en vue. Les lignes de contact entre forces opposées sont difficiles à déterminer et les acteurs impliqués dans un conflit sont plus nombreux qu'auparavant. La façon dont nous percevons la sécurité a aussi évolué. La sécurité et la sûreté de l'État et de ses citoyennes et citoyens sont désormais indivisibles. Pour faire face aux nouveaux défis sécuritaires, nos instruments ont évolué et se sont diversifiés. Désormais, Tant les organes contrôlant le secteur de la sécurité, les autorités judiciaires, que les acteurs du secteur privé sont des acteurs incontournables. Afin d'être fonctionnel, le secteur de la sécurité doit être inclusif, redevable envers les citoyennes et les citoyens et contrôlé par les instances démocratiques. En adoptant une approche holistique, la réforme du secteur de la sécurité permet à ces différents acteurs d'assumer un rôle légitime en assurant la sécurité des citoyennes et citoyens, renforçant ainsi la sécurité de l'État. Son objectif est un secteur de la sécurité effectif et réactif, apte à faire face aux défis sécuritaires émergents. À la lumière des épreuves actuelles, la réforme du secteur de la sécurité est un instrument qui contribue à la stabilité et à l'instauration d'un sentiment de confiance dans l'espace de l'OSCE. Elle consolide l'état de droit et la bonne gouvernance tout en reconnaissant l'importance de respecter les sensibilités locales et de s'aligner sur les nécessités et les priorités nationales. Chers et chers collègues, dans une certaine mesure, l'OSCE est déjà engagée dans le domaine de la réforme du secteur de la sécurité en soutenant des processus nationaux, des projets de réforme de la police ou renforçant la sécurité des frontières et le système judiciaire appartiennent déjà 
au portefeuille d'opérations de terrain de l'OSCE. Toutefois, l'organisation manque d'un cadre stratégique. Il en résulte une approche dispersée, une perte d'efficacité et un manque de durabilité. La résolution que nous vous proposons appelle les structures exécutives de l'OSCE à adopter une stratégie dans le domaine de la réforme du secteur de la sécurité. Par ailleurs, la résolution appelle les États participants et les parlementaires à partager leurs expériences et à participer aux discussions sur le développement d'une approche commune dans ce secteur. Cette nouvelle approche serait une contribution précieuse à la réorientation stratégique de l'OSCE vers un impact majeur sur le terrain et un dialogue accru dans les domaines de la sécurité et de la coopération. Une approche commune de la réforme du secteur de la sécurité permettrait à l'OSCE de soutenir les États participants dans la gestion et la prévention des conflits, ainsi que dans la gestion des défis sécuritaires actuels toujours plus complexes. Ainsi, chers et chers collègues, ma délégation vous prie de soutenir notre résolution et je vous en remercie. Merci, honorable collègue. The floor is now open for debate. Time limit for speeches is three minutes. I have two uh, speakers announced. If someone would still like to announce himself to the Secretariat, it is possible to do it just now. We now proceed to the debate. Ha chiesto la parola per primo l'onorevole Nestor Sufric dell'Ucraina, ne ha facoltà. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Спасибо. Спасибо, господин докладчику, госпожа докладчику. Безусловно, один из основных вопросов, который касается безопасности в государствах членах ОБСЕ является вопрос угрозы со стороны возможного развития радикализма. Особенно это опасно, когда радикализм прикрывается псевдопатриотизмом. Я уже приводил угнетающий, шокирующий пример того, как в Украине был убит представитель цыганской общины только за то, что хотел путешествовать, сохраняя свои этнические традиции. Сегодня меня очень беспокоит вопрос попытки э, принятия нового закона про языки. Хочу сказать, что закон, который действовал до сегодняшнего дня и заменил соответствующий закон Украинской Советской Социалистической Республики, был отменен в Конституционном суде не по сути этого закона, а по процедуре его принятия. Хочу сказать, что это довольно эксклюзивный прецедент в истории украинского парламентаризма. Новый закон, который предлагается, он сегодня не соответствует нормам Конституции, и есть реальная угроза лишения множества граждан Украины разных национальностей, включая русских, венгров, словаков, румын и болгар и многих других, право использования своего родного языка в вопросах образования и использования на территориях, которые определяются местными советами. Безусловно, это может спроцировать новое противостояние что уже имело место при неоднократном подрыве Дома культуры венгров в городе Ужгороде, что квалифицировалось как террористический акт. Безусловно, это не может не вызывать обеспокоенность. И то, что сегодня всячески задерживается внесение изменений в закон про образование, который вызвал резкую реакцию со стороны наших соседей и который фактически лишает возможности граждан Украины получить среднее образование на родном языке. И все это в свете 
событий, которые вызывают у меня крайнюю обеспокоенность. Я не хочу уподобляться Катону Старшему, но еще раз хочу сказать, что украинская власть никогда не реализует Минские соглашения. Она боится мира в собственной стране, боится ответственности за то, что она сделала, и она не заинтересована в том, чтобы в ближайший год в Украине наступил мир. И только под вашим или нашим давлением мы сможем добиться стабилизации ситуации в Украине. Спасибо за внимание. Спасибо, господин Цуфрич. Ha chiesto la parola la signora Daniela De Rieder della Germania nella facoltà. Vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Auch wir möchten den Antrag von Frau Kinanellen ausdrücklich unterstützen. Ich will dabei zwei Punkte ganz besonders adressieren. Der Entschließungsantrag verweist ja zunächst einmal darauf, dass neue Herausforderungen in unseren Sicherheitsarchitekturen äh, anstehen und dass entsprechend die Sicherheitsarchitekturen auch angepasst werden müssen. Denn die Natur der Konflikte, mit denen wir zukünftig zu tun haben werden, hat sich deutlich verändert. Warum ist das so? Die Sicherheitspolitiken müssen sich den Herausforderungen von Cyber Security und von Digital Wars stellen. Wir selber hier im Bundestag waren Opfer von einer digitalen Attacke, von einer Hackerattacke, die uns dazu genötigt hat, möglicherweise sogar ein bis zwei Tage unsere Arbeit einzustellen. Das sind Situationen, die sind untragbar. Und wenn das schon bei uns der Fall ist, dann muss man sich deutlich vor Augen führen, wie wichtig Abwehrstrategien in diesem Zusammenhang sind und was die neuen Herausforderungen auch bedeuten können. Ich will aber auch noch einen zweiten Punkt aufgreifen, der auch in dem Entschließungsantrag sehr deutlich wird. Und das sind die Gender. Aspekte, über die wir gestern hier bereits gesprochen haben. Wir hatten gestern, das werden die Damen im Raume wissen und die wenigen Herren, die sich an diesem Mittagessen mit unserer Frauenministerin beteiligt haben, die wissen, dass es wichtig ist, Frauen in die Architekturen mit einzubeziehen, weil Frauen möglicherweise einen anderen Blick, eine andere Sozialisationserfahrung in die politische Arbeit mitbringen. Aber nicht nur das. Es geht bei den OSZE-Staaten auch darum, erweiterte Strategien zu entwickeln. Und bei dem, was wir hier diskutieren, meine sehr verehrten Kolleginnen und Kollegen, geht es nicht nur darum, Papier zu produzieren oder gar Papiertiger, so nennen wir dies hier so, äh, zu entwickeln, sondern es geht auch darum, das, was wir hier besprochen haben, in die nationalen Politiken mit einzuführen. Und dort geht es auch um Sicherheitspolitik. Auch in diese Prozesse, auch auf der nationalen Ebene, gehören Frauen mit in die Prozesse. Frauen müssen hier involviert werden. Das müssen wir immer wieder deutlich machen. Denn die Perspektive des Gender-Aspekts gehört unbedingt auch mit in die Erfahrung von sexualisierter Gewalt, den Frauen aber zuweilen auch Kinder ausgesetzt sind und sie müssen entsprechend bekämpft werden. Auch Menschenrechte haben ein Geschlecht. Wir erleben sehr oft, und auch das ist ja eines der Ziele in der OSZE, dass wir dieses eben intensiver bekämpfen sollten. Und wir müssen darauf achten, dass Frauen als Mitwirkende stärker Gehör finden. Ich will keinen Hehl daraus machen. Das will ich sehr deutlich sagen, dass die Einlassung, die wir gestern Vormittag hier von unserem US-amerikanischen Kollegen gehört haben, mich nachhaltig erschüttert hat. Es kann nicht angehen, dass wir hier in der OSZE dulden, dass solche Töne hier Schule machen. Ja, Frauen sind wichtig. Und ich finde, Frauen sollten hier auch zu Gehör kommen. Umso wichtiger ist es dann, dass wir diesem Aspekt auch Rechnung tragen und den Entschließungsantrag von Frau Kinanellen nachdrücklich unterstützen. Vielen Dank. Danke Ihnen, Frau De Rieder. Uh, we, have, uh, we have another speaker who has announced himself now, is uh, Mr. Sergei Wisotsky from Ukraine. And with this, I think we consider the list of speakers closed. Mr. Wydowski, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Uh, I wanted to uh, 
inform you about some progress in the reforms of the security sector that we had in, in Ukraine. But first of all, I want to say that uh, uh, my colleague from the opposition and his he he, he presence here. Uh, and that he is able to uh, have a world here and in Ukrainian parliament despite uh, uh, his views that I am not uh, uh, fond of uh, is uh, the evidence of the democracy that we have in Ukraine. Every parliamentarian has a word, every parliamentarian has a right for his opinion and to express this opinion here and in Ukrainian parliament. Nevertheless, uh, uh, first in 20 years, Two weeks ago, we in Ukraine passed a new law on national security. This law is uh, the uh, evidence and is uh, um, the first law that was uh, uh, in Ukrainian history that totally corresponded with all the European Union norms and uh, uh, commitments uh, and standards and the NATO standards. We. Uh, wrote this vote inclusively with the international community, with the consulting groups from European Union, Union and with the civil society. Uh, we in Ukraine understand that despite the Russian aggression and the war that we have on the east boundaries and uh, despite the annexation of Crimea, uh, the security sector and the security services, the intelligence must be accountable. So we introduced, uh, introduced some revolutionary for the post-Soviet uh, um, space uh, norms as the democratic control on uh, the security service in Ukraine and the Ukraine intelligence. We will establish the Parliamentary Monitoring Committee, uh, Committee uh, Commission and the Committee that will oversight uh, the uh, legitimacy of uh, some specific procedures that uh, uh, Security Services has. Uh, we will establish uh, the new procedure of appointing the Minister of uh, um, of Defense, and uh, this minister will be a civilian person, uh, as uh, it says in the recommendations of the European Union. So my message is, uh, even despite of the difficulties of the threats, we must reform the security sector, we must take the accountability, and we must uh, give uh, a space uh, uh, for democratic control and not to set back our democracy, democratic values, the civil society and its role in the security, even if we have this kind of threats. So I encourage you to, uh, to uh, remember this, and democracy must not fail for security reasons. Thank you. Grazie onorevole Visotsky, con questo abbiamo concluso la lista degli interventi. Chiedo all'onorevole Kinner Nellen se desidera prendere posizione sugli interventi eh, in sala. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Oui, j'aimerais eh, remercier les intervenants pour leur contribution. Euh, en ce qui concerne la contribution euh, de la collègue allemande, effectivement, c'est un élément essentiel euh, d'insérer dans les formations, dans les séminaires et aussi, bien sûr, dans le cadre de la surveillance parlementaire sur tous les agents, toutes les instances impliquées dans le secteur sécuritaire, euh, le, le rôle des femmes, la fonction des femmes à tous les niveaux, mais surtout comme a souligné, souligné Madame de Ritter d'Allemagne, la protection des femmes et des, et des enfants spécialement euh, mis en danger par euh, les sociétés, euh, encore en général, mais surtout lorsque un conflit se dessine ou lorsqu'il y a conflit euh, dans un pays ou dans une région donnée. En ce qui concerne les interventions des deux collègues d'Ukraine, euh, je pense euh, avoir compris que il euh, y a d'autres euh, sujets nationaux qui ont été soulevés, euh, qui ne sont pas en relation directe avec ce projet de résolution. Euh, J'ai insisté dans ma motivation, Monsieur le Président, pour dire que euh, ce concept et cette stratégie euh, que nous demandons dans notre projet de résolution euh, laisse aussi 
place aux sensibilités nationales, évidemment, ça ne doit, euh, doit pas contenir un cadre strict et non flexible par rapport à des sensibilités euh, nationales ou régionales. Mais bien sûr, la protection des minorités euh, dans n'importe quel pays donné, la protection des minorités linguistiques, et je peux insister là-dessus, étant suisse et étant multilingue, la protection des min minorités ferait partie des valeurs, des valeurs à respecter, à mon sens, euh, en appliquant euh, ces, euh, ces séminaires qui auront lieu dans les régions euh, pour éduquer, former euh, et instruire le personnel, les instances du secteur de sécurité. Je profite de l'occasion, et c'est mon dernier point, Monsieur le Président, je profite de cette oc occasion pour rendre euh, attentif qu'il y a d'ores et déjà un séminaire euh, prévu, un séminaire régional prévu, début novembre de cette année à Minsk, qui réunira des experts, des ministres, des parlementaires, euh, des, des responsables des secteurs sécuritaires euh, où ces questions pourront être discutées. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, chers collègues. Nous allons passer maintenant à la considération des amendements qui ont été présentés sur ce projet de résolution. Il y en a trois. La copie de ces amendements qui est euh, correcte et officielle s'appelle AS 18 SI 13 Amend. I will first call the proposal of an amendment and then will call a single opponent to the amendment. I will then ask the sponsor of the draft resolution, Mrs. Kindernellen, for her opinion. I ask the speakers to observe the time limit of one minute. Following that, I shall put the amendment to the vote. We come to amendment number one, Pervoi. I call Mr. Gaspardin Tolstoy from the Rosiska Federatia to propose the amendment. Mr. Tolstoy is not in the room. Mr. Rizak. Da, господин Рыжак, да. Спасибо, господин председатель. Мы благодарим Маргариту Кинернелен. Она, как всегда, не опускается до каких-то и интриг, и каких-то инсинуаций, а действительно сформулировала очень хорошую, позитивную инициативу. Мы ее приветствуем. Это действительно одно из условий прочного мироустройства на территории ОБСЕ. Вместе с тем, на наш взгляд, желательно привести в соответствие с профильной резолюцией Совета Безопасности ООН, я назову ее номер 2151, потому что как по тексту, так и в названии она фигурирует, и она не совсем согласована с позицией ООН. В резолюции как раз Совета Безопасности речь идет только о реформировании сектора безопасности, но не об управлении им. Поэтому следует отредактировать весь текст резолюции и учесть сделанное замечание. А так, благодарю. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you, Mr. Shufri. Uh, Rizak, anyone uh, willing to speak against the amendment? Mrs. Kinnernellen. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'ai bien écouté la motivation euh, de euh, la Fédération de Russie et je la remercie d'avoir euh, euh, d'avoir euh, euh, d'avoir porté l'attention sur euh, le document des Nations Unies. Or, je dois quand même vous euh, recommander de rejeter cet euh, amendement parce que euh, nous ne sommes pas sans savoir qu'il y a eu d'importants euh, important euh, projet qui a eu une réforme en cours déjà euh, de cette réforme dans les secteurs euh, de sécurité et euh, si j'en viens aux définitions j'aimerais dire qu'avec une réforme comme euh, notre collègue russe vient de le dire 
par une réforme, on renforce l'organisation d'un secteur, certes, mais avec la gouvernance, on renforce la manière de prendre des décisions dans un secteur. Et dans le secteur de la sécurité, les deux sont nécessaires. Euh, je vous renvoie à la définition portée par le Democratic Control of Armed Forces, euh, DECAF, un des centres d'expertise en matière de politique de sécurité situé à Genève. Selon sa définition de la gouvernance, la gouvernance cor correspond à l'exercice du pouvoir et de l'autorité. Elle est un concept général qui inclut les, déci les décisions officielles du gouvernement, mais aussi les processus, les acteurs et les valeurs qui orientent la prise de décision et leur mise en œuvre. Et si je le dis en anglais, um, uh, under um, governance, the, the, excuse me, under governance, uh, the de definition, uh, the de uh, there is a problem here, the definition Can you hear me? The definition, the definition of governance is the action or manner of a governing a state or organization. It, it includes rule of law, uh, democracy, respect of fundamental rights, and respect of minorities as examples. So I uh, please recommend you to uh, reject the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Situation is clear. Mr. Rizak and supports amendment number one. The sponsor op objects, so we will vote. Who is in favor of carrying amendment number one presented, introduced by Mr. Tolstoy and presented by Mr. Rizak, please raise your voting cards. Thank you. Who is against the amendment? Overwhelming majority. I think we can, we can accept it. Abstentions? OK. Thank you. The amendment is clearly rejected. We can move to amendment number two from Mrs. Hedy Fry from Canada. Please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. I, I wanted to first uh, congratulate Ms. Keenan Ellens on bringing forward the supplementary item. I support it fully. Uh, and I also wanted to thank my colleague from uh, Germany for her comments on, uh, on the role of women in peace and security and how important it is that we recognize, for all the sake of the women who work in the armed forces in all of our nation states, that they do a good job. My, my recommendation is to add a paragraph, and I'm not going to read it, thanks to the United Kingdom. I'm not going to read it uh, out so you know what it is. You have it in front of you. And all I want to say is I think that it will strengthen what, and I'm hoping that um, Ms. Nellens could support it, but I'm hoping that it, what it does is mention the fact that women today in armed conflict in the United Nations Resolution uh, uh, um, 1888 calls for us to ch uh, this opportunity to change to strengthen our ability to make sure that women who are in post-conflict situations and who are seeking security forces to protect them have found that that isn't so and that we need to look at how we change that following UN 1888 and we can maybe move on to strengthening it with this paragraph that talks specifically about that sort of um, actual real practical action plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fry. Is anyone wishing to speak against this amendment? Nobody dares. Uh, Mrs. Kinner Nellen. Merci. Je peux être très courte, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Étant donné que j'ai signé euh, cet amendement euh, moi-même, je ne peux que vous recommander euh, de l'accepter. Merci. Thank you. There is no objection to amendment number two. Amendment number two is carried. I forgot to ask you whether there was any objection on accepting paragraphs one 
to 16, since there were no amendments. There, has no, there are no amendments. There are no requests for differentiated votes. So we can accept all uh, paragraphs until paragraph 16, plus the new one just introduced with amendment number two. We come to amendment number three, add uh, uh, a new paragraph after, I mean, first of all, paragraph 17, no objection, adopted. And the amendment number three requests to insert a new paragraph after paragraph 17. Mrs. Johnson introduced it, but she is not here, so I understood uh, from the Belgian delegation there will be support for this amendment. Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, colleagues, uh, the simple explanation for this uh, following paragraph is it's not sufficient uh, for the plight of women to be considered by policymakers. Women must be among the policymakers. Women must be allowed a place at the table to make a direct and positive contribution to the policymaking processes and intergovernment dialogue. This simple amendment makes that call, and I hope for its adoption in this assembly. Thank you very much. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment three? That's not the case. Mrs. Kinner Nellen. Thank you. I'm very much in favor of this amendment. I have signed it myself. It's a very important addition to the draft. Thank you. Thank you. I see no objection. We therefore consider amendment three carried and we introduce this additional paragraph. Is there any, please, uh, point of just, you Albania. know, I have a concern about the language. It confirms its belief that security could only be enhanced. If you say could only, I don't think, you know, it is inclusive. I think we should use it a little bit different, confirms its belief that security would be enhanced instead of saying only. A bit late, but uh, we are not so formalistic. I it's an oral you, amendment. Not looking at it, but it's an oral amendment. Does anyone object against the oral amendment? I was asked, I raised the hand, but anyhow. So the, the suggestion would be to see? Instead of saying could only be enhanced, they would say is believe the security should be enhanced by the greater in, uh, should be. Because if you say only, you're just, you know, taking a it's not okay. inclusive. Okay. I see you would like to, to, dr to drop only and to say should be enhanced. Okay, understood. There was no objection on accepting the oral amendment, but on the matter of the oral uh, amendment, on the content, is there any objection? I don't see any objection, so I assume you accept this uh, slight change in the new paragraph following paragraph 17. So agreed. Thank you. Are there remarks on paragraphs 18 to 24? If there are no remarks, we can accept in global these paragraphs. Thank you. That concludes the consideration of amendments. We can now agree on the draft resolution as amendment as a whole. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution as amendment please raise their voting cards? I have it. Thank you. Those against? Abstentions? Thank you. So unanimously adopted by 52 votes to zero as no abstentions. Thank you very much. And we conclude this supplementary item. We move on to fourth supplementary item referred to us by the Standing Committee. The title is Reaffirming the Commitment to and Guarantees of the Effective Operation of the OSCE. There are eight amendments to this item. I give the floor to Mrs. Bellens from Belgium as main sponsor 
to of this draft resolution, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, the supplementary item I present to you today comes forth out of concern, a concern bred by various events in recent years that, to me, point to a deepening chasm between OSCE member states and a concern about democracy and the rule of law that in different places is being put under pressure. Even in the workings of the OSCE, we, are, we see these problems. Disputes between member states are being fought out within the different structures of OSCE. Important decisions are being postponed. This undermines the working of OSCE to a severe degree and results in backtracking on cooperation in military, humanitarian and political affairs. Some examples include the special monitoring mission in Ukraine, but also lack of progress on the Vienna document, on the Open Skies Treaty, and the Convention of Forces in Europe Treaty. Also, sadly, the obstruction of demo democratic processes and oversight over those pr processes increases. All these elements stress the importance of OSCE. In my own country, I highlight that this organization is one of the few places where the West and Russia are speaking to each other, which is a good thing. The structural dialogue cleared by my countryman Paul Hannan is a good example of the initiatives the OSCE takes to keep playing its part. But the OSCE also has to have evaluate that part from time to time. This supplementary item puts forward a number of issues. I propose some ideas to increase funds available to OSCE, but also ideas to facilitate decision making under certain conditions. All these propositions ultimately serve the same goal, increase the uh, potential of OSCE and the safety of its personal uh, in its various missions. missions. Finally, I would like to thank the colleagues that have uh, proposed amendments, uh, the colleagues that signed for uh, this supplementary item. That means my message makes people ref reflect. Those amendments have also encouraged me to take a different perspective on my text. Undoubtedly, it will lead to interesting discussions and constructive supplements to this item. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bellens. We now open the debate. I have one speaker announced for the debate. If anyone else would like to take the floor, please uh, come here to the Secretariat during the first intervention. And I now give the floor to Mrs. Ayla Baloniemi from Finland. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The principal sponsor of the draft supplementary item on reaffirming the commitment to and guarantee of the effective operation of the OSCE refers in the preamble to the Helsinki Final Act from 1975 and to the unique role and position of the OSCE. I would like to reflect on the role of the OEC field missions and the role of the Assembly as a defender of the OEC field missions. The field missions are only uh, are one of the unique features of the OEC and they have served the organization for decades. Field missions are tools for conflict prevention and confidence building measures. The conditions for and the forms and functions of OEC field operations are a matter of permanent change. The OEC has had different experiences regarding different mechanisms to facilitate the quick deployment of experts in a times of, of crisis. I would like to underline the importance of maintaining and strengthening the work of the field missions. At the same time, it is important to guarantee the safety and security of the OSCE staff at all times. OSCE's field presence is an extremely valuable tool for promoting the organization's broad concept of security and supporting the implementation of the OSCE commitments. As we know, majority of the OSCE's staff is deployed in the field. I would like to commend them for the important work. 
their expertise and experience is, uh, is invaluable for the whole organi organization. At the same time, it is important to guarantee the safety and security of the OSC staff at all times. The OSC has great potential to influence the lives of people in areas where we work. One of the key aspects of the field missions is that they often contribute to early warning and conflict prevention, as well as to all phases of the conflict cycle, including mediation. This is why we also welcome the field missions to retain as strong mandates as possible for them to be flexible in responding to emerging threats and continuously evolving security situation. Field missions offer significant added value for all stakeholders in responding to the needs of the host countries. A good cooperation between the OSCE and the host countries in all of the three dimensions and their work is of utmost importance. Finland has always strongly supported the work of the OSCE and its institutions and field missions also through secondments and vol voluntary contributions. As parliamentarians, we can encourage our governments to continue to support the work of the field missions. The OSC assembly, its permanent committees, as well as ad hoc committees and special representatives should continue the work together and thus help the field missions in pursuing their tasks, namely to promote democratic reforms to introduce confidence-building measures and finding peaceful solutions to emerging conflict situations. Thank you. Kitos. We move now to the consideration of the amendments submitted to the draft resolution. We had eight amendments, two has been withdrawn, so we will consider the six remaining amendments. The document is called AS 18 SI 16 Amend. I will first call the proposer of an amendment, then we call the single opponent to the amendment, and they'll ask the sponsor of the draft resolution for her opinion. There are, there are no amendments proposed to title and paragraphs 1, 2, and 3. Do you agree that we? adopt them. They are adopted. We come to amendment number one, introduced by Mrs. Jackson Lee. She is not here. Someone from the Belgian. Mrs. Bellens is willing to put an amendment to her own uh, uh, resolution. That's very good uh, working method. Please, Mrs. Bellens. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, as I signed for the amendment, so uh, I will introduce it. Um, this, is, this amendment underscores what is so unique about the uh, 1975 Helsinki Final Act. It's comprehensive definition of security that includes respect for human rights. In signaling the end of the Cold War, Cold War in 1990, the Charter of Paris took it one step further uh, and, and embraced democracy as critical to the future of security and cooperation in Europe. I think this amendment is uh, a valuable addition to the resolution, so I'm in favor of this amendment. Thank you, Well, Any anyone willing to speak against this amendment? Can I refrain from asking Mrs. Balance whether she agrees as a sp sponsor to the amendment? I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, so no objection. Amendment number one is carried. Thank you. There are no proposed amendments to paragraphs four to nine. Can we now agree on those paragraphs? No objections, so decided. We come to amendment number two. I call Mrs. Keener Nellen from Switzerland to propose amendment two. Sie haben das Wort. Besten Dank, Herr Präsident, geschätzte Kolleginnen und Ko Kollegen. Uh, par cet amendement, uh, nous vous prions uh, d'éviter de pointer du doigt 
un, un pays en particulier. C'était depuis toujours notre philosophie de la délégation suisse de ne pas pointer du doigt un pays ou une région en particulier et de faire ainsi escalader les tensions plutôt que euh, de euh, tendre à la déescalation. Euh, même si la problématique reste, nous vous prions donc euh, d'amender euh, par notre amendement cette, euh, ce point additionnel et nous vous en remercions. Merci Madame kinner le, le, le test que j'ai ici propose de, to delete due to steps taken by the delegation of a participating state with that council, but the sentence continues. So you just want to drop these words and the rest of the sentence remains according to reports from the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, or you want to delete all the, the last part of the sentence? No, no, you are perfectly right, Mr. Chair. It just concerns uh, this one partial element of uh, the text. In French, it's just the suppression of the element compte tenu. So after the first um, comma, compte tenu de démarches entreprises par la délégation d'un État membre auprès du dit Conseil, comma. Hein? Donc juste l'élément entre les deux commas. Le début reste et la fin euh, de l'article reste. Thank Merci. you very much. Yeah, no, it's clear. So we would only delete that words between the two commas and the rest of the paragraph would remain the same. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment? No one. Mrs. Balance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I thank you. Uh, colleague Kinder Nellen for the proposal, but uh, I think it would change the meaning of the paragraph, so uh, I'm not in favor of this amendment. The sponsor opposes. We will vote on the amendment number two. Who is in favor of, Mr. Uh, of amendment number two? Please raise the voting cards. Thank you. Who is against amendment number two, please? Thank you, abstentions. Thank you. The amendment is rejected by 23 to 12 votes and seven abstentions. Thank you. There are no proposed amendments to paragraphs 11 to 14. Can we agree upon these paragraphs? So decided. Amendment number three. El señor Cosido de España nos propone esa enmienda. Tiene la palabra. Thank you, Chairman. We are a parliamentary assembly. So we, may, we believe in two main principles. The first one is the rule of law. The second one is the independence of the justice. As a parliamentarians, we can have any kind of political debate about any question, but I think that we must not make judicial uh, judgments or take in question, put in question judicial judgments. Uh, there are other ways to ask when you disagree with some, uh, when some judgment. Uh, the Constitutional Court in Spain, or in, indeed the Estrasburg Court, you can ask to review this. But anyway, I think this is not the place, a parliamentary assembly, to, to make a judicial debate about an independent justice. I know that Spanish democracy is quite young. It is just 40 years. But I will ask to this assembly to have confidence in our democracy and to have confidence of the rule of law in Spain. So I ask to retire this paragraph that made this kind of judicial judgments. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señor Cosido. Hay alguien que quiera hablar en contra de la enmienda, por favor. Gracias, es... presidente. Laura Castel. 
Borrar este párrafo no cambiará la realidad que España tiene prisioneros políticos acusados de rebelión y sedición por organizar un referéndum y dar voz a los ciudadanos, a los que votan sí y a los que votan no. Porque ante todo los catalanes somos demócratas y recuerden que el acta final de Helsinki reconoce el derecho de autodeterminación. Borrar esta referencia porque lo pide el partido político más corrupto de Europa con más de 800 casos de corrupción les debería hacer reflexionar sobre qué pretenden y al lado de quién quieren ustedes estar, democracia o corrupción. Ustedes deciden. Y un último detalle. La persona que promueve esta enmienda ordenó crear una estructura policial destinada a obstaculizar la investigación de los escándalos de corrupción que afectaban al Partido Popular y la investigación y persecución de adversarios políticos. A raíz de estos hechos, el ministro tuvo que dimitir. Y pueden comprobar estos datos en las conclusiones del dictamen del Congreso de los Diputados sobre brigadas políticas publicado el 21 de septiembre del año pasado. Gracias, presidente. Ha pedido la palabra otra vez el señor Cosito. No es costumbre, pero excepcionalmente 15 segundos, por favor. Sí, just to say that to, to do this kind of personal, you know, disaccreditation of a partner in, in the delegation, of a partner of this assembly, I think is really the, bad, the, be, the worst way to defend the political position of Catalonia. I think uh, I am very honored to be the former director of national police. I think we made a great job in favor of freedom and in favor of the rule of law in my country. So thank you very much. Gracias. Las posiciones están claras entre y nos muestran el pluralismo español, que es una, también un hecho democrático. Si tenemos pluralismo en Ucrania, también lo tenemos en España. Está muy buena. Eh, la señora Bellens, por favor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not in favor of the amendment um, according to the United Nations. Self-determination is a human right, and therefore I would like to uh, keep uh, the paragraph 15. Thank you. We come to the vote. Who is in favor of amendment number three, deleting paragraph 15? Please raise your voting cards. Thank you. Who is against para Amendment 3? Thank you. Abstentions? There needs to be another vote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dear colleagues, we will, I will ask to count again. We have 17 to 17 and 10 abstentions. So I will ask, tell us to check a second time. Maybe we have a more accurate result. This side, this side, the center. Okay. We repeat the vote. Who is in favor of amendment number three, deleting paragraph 15? Raise the voting cards. Thank you. Who is against? Raise the voting cards. Yes. Abstentions? So, we have some more participants to this vote, <laughs> which proves that it's good. Uh, by the way, I suggested to the Bureau already one year ago to introduce an electronic uh, voting system, but uh, we need more credits, uh, so Mrs. Barnett, you know, you will find some additional money for introducing a, an electronic counting system. Anyhow, the result is now 20 
in favor of the amendment, 18 against, and 12 abstentions. So the amendment is carried. We come to amendment number four, suggesting to add a new subparagraph after subparagraph 16b. So we are considering paragraph 16. No objections on the whole paragraph, but there is a proposal to add a new subparagraph after the subparagraph paragraph 16b. Amendment was introduced by Mrs. Jackson. She is not present. Is Mrs. Bellens willing to speak to optimize, optimize her resolution? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, the new paragraph, um, this amendment is a logical operative call that comes from the earlier amendment, underscoring the link between human rights and democracy on the one hand, and peace and security and cooperation on the other hand. I think it's uh, an approval for the resolution. Thank you. I see no objection, so we can accept this amendment number four and introduce this new subparagraph. There, are, there is an additional amendment number five to add another subparagraph after the new one we just introduced. And once again, being, coming from Mrs. Jackson Lee, who is missing today, we ask Mrs. Bellens to introduce the amendment. This amendment focuses on some of the more important work done by the OSCE and the need to give that work the support it deserves. Uh, as representative on freedom of the media, Harlem Désir France um, reminds us that free media and particularly investigative journalism are under threat right now. We need to fight back and defend free medium. Human trafficking remains a problem throughout the OSCE region. I believe we must remain actively engaged in efforts to com combat it. I also want to support my colleague from Canada, Heidi Fry, and call for more to be done by OSCE institutions and missions to address gender-based violence. I hope the colleagues will agree and pass this amendment. Thank you well. Anyone uh, opposing, objecting to this amendment? Don't see any opposition. So if uh, there is no opposition, we consider amendment number five as adopted. Thank you. Amendment number six was withdrawn, so we will not consider it. We can now agree on, uh, on the whole paragraph 16 as amendment. No objections, so agreed. We move now to amendment number seven concerning paragraph 17. Also here. Uh, sorry, amendment six is withdrawn. Withdrawn, retirado. There is no amendment six. Uh, and uh, amendment Number seven is to introduce a new subparagraph after subparagraph 17C. Once again, Mrs. Jackson Lee is missing. Mrs. Balance has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The preambular section of the resolution includes a reference to illicit efforts by digital means to interfere in elections. This amendment brings the issue to the operative section as well. It calls on the OECD to pay closer attention to this growing problem and to include discussion of the issue in its election reports. Such reporting should include not only what attempts are made by other countries to interfere in another country's election, but also what a targeted country is doing or should do to prevent that outside interference from succeeding. The integrity of election processes is vital and I hope this amendment will be adopted. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Mrs. Balance, you agree with your amendment? So, <laughs> if there is no opposition, Paragraph 17 is amended with this additional subparagraph. 
Thank you very much. Amendment number eight has been withdrawn, so there will be no discussion about it. Can we now agree on paragraph 17 as amendment as a whole? That's the case. Thank you. This concludes the consideration of amendments. I propose that we now formally move to a vote on the draft resolution as amended. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution as amended please raise their voting cards? It was drawn. In army, uh, withdrawn, uh, not anymore. <laughs> you have it? Please, those against, raise your voting cards. Against. Thank you. Am uh, abstentions. Thank you. The resolution as amended is adopted by 50 votes to two and two abstentions. Thank you for your cooperation. We now move to the fifth and last supplementary item of this morning, uh, strengthening the visibility of OSCE Parliamentary Assembly within the national parliaments of participating states. This has been referred to us by the Standing Committee under Rule 21.3 of the Rules of Procedure, and so will not be subject to a debate like the other items, but I ask the sponsor, Mrs. Doris Barnett, to introduce us the meaning of this uh, uh, resolution. Please, you have the floor. Vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Liebe Kolleginnen, liebe Kollegen, wir kommen einmal im Jahr zur Jahrestagung und dann noch zwei weitere Male zusammen. Aber wie ernst nehmen wir uns selbst, wie ernst nehmen wir das, was wir dann in der Regel hier tun und verabschieden? Ich denke, jeder von uns nimmt sich selbst sehr ernst wahr, aber ich habe den Eindruck, in unseren Heimatparlamenten wird das nicht immer so gesehen, beziehungsweise wird das, was wir hier verabschieden, nicht immer so respektiert, so aufgenommen, so wahrgenommen. Deswegen war meine Idee, mit diesem Supplementary Item zu sagen, wir sollten uns alle darauf verständigen, in einem gewissen Zeitraum nach unserer Jahrestagung eben unsere äh, ent entsprechende Erklärung, dieses Jahr wird es die Berliner Erklärung sein, in unseren Heimatparlamenten zumindest mal zu diskutieren, am besten im Parlament, natürlich auch in den zuständigen Ausschüssen und dann Rückmeldung geben an das Büro, einfach um zu sehen, was wird denn daraus, was passiert daraus, können wir dann tatsächlich tatsächlich auch die Politik in unseren Heimatländern ein Stück weit ändern im Sinne dessen, was wir hier beschließen. Wir, deswegen auch Best Practice, wie bekommt man es am geschicktesten gemacht, dass die anderen Kolleginnen und Kollegen im Parlament unsere Arbeit wahrnehmen. Es ist auch ein Stück der eigenen Wertschätzung, die, die ich hier vorantreiben will. Insoweit wäre ich sehr dankbar, wenn wir uns alle wenn wir alle unsere Arbeit hier ernst nehmen und entsprechend ernst in unseren eigenen Heimatparlamenten vortragen. Ich würde mich freuen über Ihre Unterstützung. Vielen Dank. Vielen herzlichen Dank an Doris Barnett. Möchte jemand gegen diese Resolution das Wort ergreifen? Ich sehe niemanden. Please, you have the, uh, Canada, you have the floor. Thank you, colleagues, for the opportunity to say a few remarks on this. I, I have supported this resolution from the first time I saw it. I think it's very important. It is very significant, the work we do here. We have all traveled here from other work. We have other commitments. Our parliaments have expensed our cost to be here. And the follow-up is an area that concerns me, and that's why I support this resolution. What we do when we go back to our parliaments is significant in explaining to our colleagues and to our population the resolutions that were debated here, that were adopted here, and that we should take those resolutions and explain to our parliaments within a set period of time. I would argue, for example, within 60 days of our parliaments reconvening in our host countries, that each delegate be required to report 
on their participation of not only their delegation, but their individual participation, and what the OSCE decided were the priorities. It's very important that there be a follow-up. We're all aware of the Council Ministers and their consensus, our foreign ministers meet on a regular basis. I've asked at the beginning of this session that the Secretary General report back to the OSCE on what those ministers said about our resolutions. I think that's equally important, but I think we all have a role to play in our individual parliament, and I'm very happy to support this resolution. Thank you very much. It was not a speech against, but a valuable contribution to our debate. So uh, we take it as, a, let's say, point of order on the implementation of the resolution, if carried. Is anyone willing to speak again? Please, you have the uh, Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reluctant to say something, but um, I think as an assembly you are important or not. And if you have to uh, uh, say something about your own importance, I don't know if that is a sign of strength. You have to be important, and then you don't have to convince other people that you are important. So this is a very much a resolution, and I'm reluctant to say this, of a kind of weakness. We have to become more important and not saying that we are important. Do you... <laughs> it's a philosophical, uh, um, of course, uh, way of thinking. We can have, since we have uh, some minutes left, we can have uh, a, a little discussion. It's not bad that we discuss about the consequence and the relation of what we do in our national parliaments. Uh, Gaspardine Rizak. Спасибо, господин председатель. Мне кажется, что очень выдержанная и со всех сторон взвешенная инициатива Дорис Барнет, и мы должны ее поприветствовать за такую качественную работу. Единственное замечание, мне кажется, что авторитет ОБСЕ только возрастет, если мы будем меньше вносить политизированных резолюций и тех резолюций, которые сталкивают нас вот с противоречиво, и мы не, не, не вырабатываем консенсус. Вот если будет такой заинтересованный подход, и если общественность наших стран будет видеть о том, что мы действительно вырабатываем меры конструктивные, а не пытаемся пикироваться здесь, то авторитет нашей организации возрастет. А так благодарю вас за взвешенную и вовремя э, сформулированную инициативу. Благодарю. Спасибо. Спасибо, господин Резак. And this almost a conclusion of our discussion. It leads us to remember what uh, Minister Piki said on the opening session. Um, you will be heard at the ministerial level probably more if you produce less resolutions, but more consistent, more pregnant, more. And this then one part of our work, and the second part, that's absolutely right, the idea of Mrs. Barnett, we have, but it's a task for ourselves, to pass what we do here in our national parliaments. This is, uh, the, but this is the responsibility of each of us, and I think we all experience the same thing. When we go back home, there is the budget debate, there is uh, some in passionate debate on some law, and nobody is really listening on what we have been doing in the international assemblies, not only OSCE, also others. So it is our task to remember always our colleagues that this international cooperation uh, at parliamentary level is a very important one, has, is representing the ideas, the position, the will, the different ideas of of our citizens, of the voters of all our countries, and this is a valuable element of understanding between our nations and shall support the positive efforts of our governments to reach solutions and not to fight against each other. This is, I think, the spirit of our work, but I would like to give Mrs. Barnett back the floor for concluding the discussion. <coughs> Sehr geehrt, sehr geehrter Herr Vorsitzender, Sie haben das sehr schön zusammengefasst. Ich möchte nur noch mal zum niederländischen, niederländischen Kollegen sagen, äh, zu sagen, wir wollen sichtbarer werden, das ist doch keine Schwäche. Im Gegenteil, das ist darauf, worauf wir bestehen, weswegen wir gewählt worden sind. Und ähm, was auch die Wähler an uns äh, herantragen, dass sie sagen, dann, dann, du gehst jetzt zu den Konferenzen, man hört ja gar nichts davon. Deswegen müssen wir da auch ein bisschen mehr Wirbel machen und auch gucken, dass 
dass uns die Presse ähm, mehr hört. Das ist äh, in manchen Ländern auch nicht so einfach. Und äh, was Belarus angeht, weniger polit politisieren. Ja Gott, wir sind Politiker, wir politisieren natürlich. Wir sollten es allerdings nur auf eine faire Weise machen und äh, niemand immer nur per se an den Pranger stellen, sondern versuchen, Lösungen zu finden. In diesem Sinne, denke ich, ist unsere, unsere Versammlung eine große Unterstützung und Hilfe für unsere Regierungen und damit auch für die Menschen, die wir vertreten. Ich glaube, es sind schon ein paar hundert Millionen, für die wir hier sitzen. Vielen herzlichen Dank für noch auch diese abschließenden Worte. Ich glaube, wir dürfen zur Abstimmung überschreiten. Wer möchte diese Resolution annehmen, möge das mit Erhebung der Stimmkarte bezeugen. Who is in favor of the resolution? Thank you. Who is against this resolution? None. Abstentions? None. Congratulations, the last resolution has been adopted unanimously by 51 votes to zero and no abstention. I thank you all for the participation in the discussion and in the vote. Thank you, Doris Barnett. We now come to the very important election of committee officers for the 27th annual session of the Assembly. Nominations closed at 9 o'clock a.m. The International Secretariat informs us that the following nominations have been received in the table office. For chair, Mr. Filippo Lombardi, Switzerland. I stand to be recognized. I stand so that they can see you. <laughs> uh, you. You know me, yes. Okay. For vice chair, Mrs. Sofio Kazarava from Georgia. She chairs too much, but anyhow, <laughs> she will be a good vice chair for our committee. I think we had her with pleasure uh, in the debates in the last uh, days. You know Mrs. Sofio Kazarava. For rapporteur, Mr. Alan Farrell, Ireland. Please stand. As the position of chair is not contested, I declare the nominee for chair, Mr. Filippo Lombardi from Switzerland, elected by acclamation. In accordance with Rule 36.5. Likewise, as the position of vice chair is not contested, I declare the nominee for that position, Mrs. Sofia Kazarava, Georgia, elected by acclamation. Likewise, as the position of rapporteur is not contested, I declare the nominee for that position, Mr. Alan Farrell, Ireland, elected by acclamation. <laughs> Dear colleagues, this concludes the work of the first committee for the 27th annual session. I would like to thank you all of you, for your dedication to this forum and for the productive dialogue we have conducted over our time together. I would like also to thank our interpreters, with whom, whom we could not have such a productive session, at least some of us. Many thanks also for the excellent professionals of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly Secretariat for their hard work in organizing our meetings. The committee will next meet at the annual winter meeting in Vienna in February. I now declare the 2018 annual meeting of the OSC Parliamentary Assembly's General Committee on Political Affairs and Security geschlossen. <laughs>